Hey everybody, it is Quickened and I'm making part two of the ABBA letter video. So if you have not watched my part one of the ABBA letter mystery conspiracy going around Philadelphia, is it here? I'll leave that video linked in this card right here, right now. Click that first because I'm not gonna go through a lot of the information that I established in that first video, a lot of the research, but I am going to make a lot of mentions to it. Right click, new tab that boy, watch that video, and then come back to this one. I'll also have it linked in the description. But today I'm going to be making the follow-up video to the ABBA letter video. So I didn't think I was going to make this video, Although I was very invested in the ABBA letter and I'll go into that, the day everything started happening, I was just like a little disenchanted with everything. And I'll explain that too. So I didn't think I would make this video until the sequence of events that I'm going to describe started to unfold and everything just kind of changed. I have a piece of evidence that I discovered that is just going to change everything. So after the ABBA letter came out and everything like that, my friend Logan hit me up. And you might know Logan from that time we went to see Morrissey together and Morrissey canceled the show while we were literally waiting in line. Okay, so how fucking typical we just... So we came to see if there was gonna be a big line. Do you wanna introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Logan, I'm no one. <laughs> Zero followers. <laughs> zero, zero followers. Yeah. Public account, no followers. And on that day, a relationship ended and another relationship blossomed. So after making the ABBA letter, I made a lot of connections to the Toy and B Tyler. So if you didn't watch my first video, do it. But in brief, the Toy and B Tyler is somebody who has been leaving these mysterious tiles around Philadelphia and then the world that have this message on it that's a little hard to decipher. It's very mysterious and there's like a lot of folklore that surround the Toy and B Tyler. I recommended that you guys watch a movie and in that movie, there is this narrator, Justin Durr. So after making that video, Logan hit me up and he was like, I wanna know everything about this Toy and B Tyler. So I was like, well, you know the narrator from the documentary? Well, he's a musician and he's having a show. And I'm not kidding you, we went. We had a really, really awesome time. Logan's video of the show was really sick. I honestly had like an out of body experience, I'm not lying, because I was like, look at these people who just love what they do, having an amazing time. Wow. <laughs> May I have more please? In that time we were able to talk to Justin and we learned a lot of information and from what I understood and the connections I could make, Abba and the Toy and B Tyler are different people. Though very exciting, all of it's very exciting, different people. So until then, it kind of died down. It wasn't, you know, I tried to post my video on the Philadelphia subreddit and was not welcomed very welcomely. Someone told me to go back to Tumblr with my eyebrows. So from there, I felt like I was a little disenchanted with everything. And if it was a prank, I hadn't heard much more about it. It came to the 27th and I had contacted Rosie and I was like, let's get a drone over there. I had talked to somebody who said that they had an apartment nearby and we should all go on their roof. Connections were made and established to take in as much of the ABBA letter as possible. But up until the night before, I hadn't heard anything, including the night before, including the hour before. So that morning we went to a flea market and I heard from Logan who said that he was on his way to the 27th and Girard lot. I went there the morning of and I didn't see any activity. I didn't see chairs or like some sort of power element, nothing. So I kind of just thought it had came and went. I didn't see anything on Instagram, searched all the hashtags, like 
I did my research and just assumed that it was over. So we went to a flea market out of state and on our way back, our car broke down and Logan went to meet us over at the field and people were there. A lot of people, like hundreds of people. I hit up Logan and I was like, I can't make it. We're broken down on the side of the road. What's going on? And Logan thankfully has provided us with a ton of footage of the festival. So from what you can see, there's just a ton of people. P there was a DJ set up who I guess brought their own power supply and they were playing ABBA hits and other dance music. There were people in some costumes and I would say the age range was pretty wide too. It was a Saturday, it was really nice weather and there are a lot of like micro breweries on um, that little strip. So people were getting drinks and dancing when I just like couldn't really believe it. There wasn't much of a buzz, but I guess people plugged it into their phone and remembered that morning and went to check it out. Logan's phone died and by the time we got back to Philly, we had missed each other by I'm thinking a couple moments. There was a lot of hesitation for me to go and see the ABBA. I'm sorry, it has been dubbed the furnace party. There was hesitation for me to go to the furnace party. One, because of that Reddit thread. I thought someone was gonna be like, it's her with the eyebrows. Being recognized, you know, I'm not always ready for it. Someone said that they got a really bad feeling from it and I adapted that as well. I was like, well, now I have a bad feeling, which is why we wanted to do the drone and the roof. But after it had gone on for about four hours and it was trending on Twitter, I was like, let's go. Another bit of my disenchantment seemed to be a lot of pictures of people just taking pictures on their phone. And just like a lot of phone stuff, it looked like a concert when everyone has their phone out. A lot of people just like waiting around for something to happen was my understanding of it. So when Cal and my friend came over, we were like, all right, let's like, let's go. And then we'll just like do something else. We'll like pass by. So we got there and it was kind of awesome. There was a kid playing like, there were kids playing like, I think it's called cornhole. It's like a board that they have holes in it and you like throw a beanbag through it. Usually it's like a drinking game. There was kids playing that. There was kids all around like a fire pit that was already established there. Like I think someone burns their trash there. A bunch of kids around there. There was a girl literally asleep like she had brought a blanket to like lay out and tan, I guess. And she was asleep. She was my favorite person there. But when we went, it was really, really sandy. I think at that point it had been going on for like five hours and people had kicked up a lot of dirt. So we went for a little while, checked it out. Didn't see anyone I knew, didn't see Logan anymore. Didn't see like a central area of activity. I can tell you, I was really excited to just like see a bunch of people together for no apparent reason. I saw a tweet that was like, Philadelphia, we'll come to your party. <laughs> and I thought that that was really, really special. So that was my initial idea of it. Saw the DJ, someone said it was Philadelphia's Coachella and I died. And I thought this is just like a nice thing that a bunch of people did for some sort of like urban legend. And I think that that's really fun. You know, a bunch of people celebrate Pi Day and May the 5th, so why not April 27th, you know? This is kind of where everything changes. And this is kind of the most exciting part of what I have to tell you. A day passed and like I said, I was a little disenchanted by everything, but that was kind of reinst like restored when I saw that people were all together and stuff. And then I noticed that there was one singular article about a man and he was a little out of place when I saw him in the images because it was mostly just like, you know, people in their 20s or people with dogs or people with coolers. And then there was this older gentleman who was in a wheelchair being pushed by another woman. And I only saw one article about this man. So I immediately was like, who is this? And I clicked on it. The article said that it was this man, Abba, and that he had come to the furnace party. And I was like, why didn't anybody talk about this? Logan was my eye on the scene and he missed Abba as well. So I read the article and it said that Abba was 
a person local to that field who had been in and out of homelessness. He was in his 60s and he had like this presence in his community that he was a community leader, that he had helped people and that he was often like saying like really thoughtful and guiding things. So his sister had taken down this letter. He had communicated it to her and she wrote it down. And then she wanted to spread his message and there wasn't any mention of how this was delivered, but I assume her or people who had been touched by him in his teachings spread this message for him. Apparently, he had a few couple things to say. Someone passed him a microphone, but he had already said what he wanted to say to the people who were surrounding him in that moment, and then he left. I scrubbed this hashtag, and the only mention of this that I found was from the Philly Voice article. When I understood that, immediately my hope in all of this was restored. It made it seem like this was a guy and his sister just really wanted to get his message out there and it like just kind of worked. His sister is quoted in the article of saying it went viral, which was their intention. And then it led to this big gathering of people who weren't necessarily there because of his message, but I would say were there because it was just so interesting and just a little bit haunting and everyone wanted to figure out what it was about. And I thought at first, like, was he upset that it was just like a bunch of us kids there and no one really like was listening to him? I would say the majority of people did not see him or know that he was there just by the evidence of it not trending on Twitter along with the other messages, no one really mentioning it, no one like had a selfie with him. Did make the connection that his name is Abba and that he was somebody who you know, had some things to say and some ideas and his sister wrote them down. So to me, that helped me understand that the letter was dictated and that that was probably how he spoke. The way that the letter is kind of broken up and the phrasing, it makes sense that it was spoken and then someone wrote it down. So that mystery was solved for me as well. So with that clarity, I did feel guilt that like a bunch of us ruined his festival that was dead serious and not a festival. I wanted to just like chase that feeling. So I went back to 27th and Girard and I had this idea that it was gonna be covered in trash, that there was gonna be beer cans and just like someone asleep, you know, like I just had this idea that we all came, we trashed this field, no one listened to the man and it was over. So I'm at 27th and Girard where the ABBA letter, the um, furnace fest, I think is what people start calling it. And I'm at the field to see just like if the field got trash or not. And at a glance, like it really doesn't look bad at all. This is it behind me. Seems okay. It looks like there's some sort of something right there. But other than that, everything looks pretty clear. Um, it's been a few days since the festival, but I'm just gonna check out that one thing. Well, this looks like a little bit of trash. I expected it to be kind of trashed, so this isn't too bad. I just want to see what this is. Everything's kind of normal though. Like, I think I mentioned in my first video, mostly people just like park here. I don't know what this is. So I went there and this is what I found. I couldn't believe it. All of a sudden, all of the enchantment had been restored to me from the very beginning of this ABBA letter. ABBA was the man and it was his letter. And everything made sense as to what this meant. I think that this is an update to the ABBA letter. It says, no bulldozer, try plan B. Stop collecting so many dead animal remains in your body. 2020. So there's none of these that I can eat. It looks like someone ate some of the Rolos and left them. They seem to be 
Okay, there's another message on this side. When it becomes real to you, you can undo your addiction to death. I thought that that was a pile of trash left behind from the festival, but it looks like it's another message from the original ABBA. I, I feel a little choked up, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty special. I thought that I was going to be more pessimistic about the event. Just looking at pictures of it, it seemed kind of commodified. But I've read a lot of people's experiences and it seemed really nice. And ABBA actually came to the event and I think was like really moved. So that's really special that instead of him feeling like, oh, all these stupid kids came here and drank IPAs, I think he's feeling like his message was received. So I have with me the little card and mine had a piece of candy tape to it, but... So what I take from this letter, which is like dictated a lot better, it's much easier to read and understand on this letter, which almost makes the original letter easier to understand once you have this as a guide. I just think it's a lot, it's just very clear to understand when it becomes real to you, you can undo your addiction to death. To me, that feels like this is a man who is saying like, stop eating meat, stop eating animals. Feel better and then inspire people to see it's not that hard, plus desire for meat goes away. So once you are meat free for a little while, take on the health benefits and then share it with others. Save the first graders from becoming murderers like us killing mommy earth. So clearly that means like become a vegetarian and then instill those values into younger people. And once you stop eating meat, you know, the benefits are worldwide. Animal agriculture is a huge problem and not even like telling you that as a vegan, just like from how much water it uses, its footprint on the earth is just outstanding in the worst way. So he said, what we need to do is wake up, do love. So being more aware of this, I would say it's really hard, especially in a community like Philadelphia to encourage people to break out of their ways and to change and do something different. So if ABBA's message, which is a lot more clear here, is to get people to stop eating meat, one wow, <laughs> my godfather, but this would be the most outstanding way to do it. Get on the news, have this big festival with a bunch of millennials go and celebrate. I think it's really interesting. So Abba continues on the other side. No bulldozer? Try plan B. Stop collecting so many dead animal remains in your body. No need to be sedated, just think about where all that comes from. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Try to start meat one time per day, 365 times until April 27th, 2020. So, like I said, this as a decipher makes the other letter a lot more clear. I don't know if Reddit has their hands on this, but when I found this, I was so overwhelmed because it's just a man's message and it might be, you know, I don't wanna make any assumptions, but because his sister did write this down for him, it might be a man who doesn't have access to spreading his message, but he really truly believes in it. I've explained this to a lot of people and I'm sure outside of Philadelphia, nobody cares, but you guys were the people who encouraged me to make the second half of this video because you were like, what happened? Like, what happened? Sometimes my like homegrown Philadelphia videos, I think are a waste of time because you need to, I feel like have some sort of understanding of Philadelphia to know that it's such a wacky place. But I'm really grateful that you guys gave this video an opportunity and took it in because how else would you know that this is happening? Like something organic and grassroots like this. It's something really special. I didn't see ABBA in real life and in doing all this research, I didn't see him. He may be homebound or just, you know, restricted to his neighborhood, but 
I am excited and this is something I will cherish. A lot of people threw out their original Ava letter because they said it was creepy and it was weird, but this is much easier to understand and if there is going to be a Furnace Festival next year, it will be on the same exact day, April 27, 2020. This has been the urban legend, kind of debunked, of the Abba letter. The big pile, all of the candy, just made me feel like it was a thank you. And all of the people showing up amplified his message. Even if it just got people to be like, what are all these kids doing across the street? and maybe took time to Google the letter and think about it a little more. Easy to decipher or not. I think it brought a bunch of people together. The tattoo shop did like a flash sheet for it. I don't know if anyone got one of the tattoos. If you did, comment below. It really reminds me that I can be such a pessimist and all of this was actually really fun. And I am excited that to whatever degree I was a part of it. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please let me know through your virtual confirmation that this is something that you like to see on this channel. I tend to chase all of these things, be it in front of the camera or not. Sorry, Justin Durr for going to your show as espionage. But thank you to Logan for providing us all of the visuals and thanks to you guys. Anyway, I love you. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I post lifestyle content as well. Thanks Abba and Abba's family for bringing this exciting adventure onto us and until next time, bye.